In a previous video, we talked a little bit as far as what is GIMP capable of. And again, GIMP is a free software package. I wanted to take a brief moment though and also talk a little bit from a multimedia standpoint, talk about Lightroom. Now Lightroom in comparison to GIMP and Photoshop, really its primary focus is actually twofold. Number one, just organizing your photographs. But on the flip side, number two is it does provide photo editing elements. More specifically, all of the drop down options that you would see in GIMP and Photoshop as far as color levels, uh, tonal controls, exposure, etc. That's Lightroom's primary focus here. So just to take you through here and show you a little bit more about what photo uh, types of editing options you have here, I have Lightroom open. Again, unfortunately, Lightroom is one of the Adobe products that you have to pay to use. They do have a package that for $10 a month, you can work with Lightroom and Photoshop, and those are the only two software packages you get. Um, to me, the problem, at least my personal opinion, one of the problems is, is honestly, everything you can do in Lightroom, you can do in Photoshop. Really, you only need the one software package. So while it's nice to have, as far as from an organizational standpoint, Lightroom, I would say if you're only dealing with photographs, Lightroom is going to get the job done, but you don't have a lot of options as far as just getting Lightroom. All right, so a couple of things I wanna point out here. Over on the left-hand side here. This is where you can organize all of your pictures. And you can actually see, because they're in my downloads folder, I have several the several photographs here that I was working here. And you can organize how you see them um, as far as that goes, or you can focus on them individually. So I'll go ahead and go just so you can see the pictures here. And over on the right-hand side, however, you have options such as your presets. You also can, you know, crop, you can heal, you can mask. You can also, in the presets, I want to start with those because honestly, that's kind of the dangerous one. Uh, a lot of folks will see that, like newbie uh, photographers, and they'll be like, great, you know, I can come in here. And as you can see, it is just that. What it will do is, Lightroom, and this is almost kind of integrating some preset elements here that, yeah, it's going to come in and say, okay, we're going to say a portrait. So if I click on one of these and I begin to change as far as the portrait values go, let's see here, let's see if we can get a this might actually be a little better. Yeah, so you can start to kind of see it. You can see it in her face happening there as far as changing those portrait options. Now, other things though, like, okay, so let's say maybe summer. You see how I can just roll over each of these and it's giving me a preset. While some of these may be, you know, graphically engaging, like maybe I am doing something that I need something with a little bit more red for say a magazine advertisement or a web advertisement, I'm not really editing the photograph. Lightroom even goes so far as if you go and actually put it up in the community, it will use Adobe's AI system to suggest the best settings for your photograph to you. So again, there's that AI kind of creeping back in as far as multimedia is concerned. So some folks may sit there and say, okay, yeah, you know what? I just need to choose one of these and my photo is going to be fixed. Now, another option that people may also say to themselves is you'll come into the edit option. So let me close this preset so we have a little more room you do have a lot of options being able to come in as far as once again, there's those light options. Here's the colors, the details. So, and this is where folks get into 
into trouble is you'll see something like sharpening and you're like, oh, I'm going to sharpen this and it won't be blurry anymore. Well, number one, you can see you can only go so far, but also as you can see now through the face, you can see through the hair and even kind of over here in the ferns, doesn't even look realistic anymore as far as the design goes. So yeah, you do have a lot of extra options here. One other thing that I see uh, that kind of will mess with folks is right here, the age old auto button. Pretty much what happens is Adobe uses its artificial intelligence to just preset everything in your photo. It's gonna analyze the photograph for you and it will try to do its best to tweak the photo. So if we do auto on this, as you can see, didn't do a terrible job here. Lightened the image. Uh, we don't have blurriness in the face. The hair is more robust. You could see a lot more vibrant colors there. So you can see here even, you know, what it did as far as having to tweak as far as the overall graphics. You can even see as far as kind of, you know, what it edited as far as the curve is concerned here. So it reset your curve for you here as far as the layout goes. While the AI is nice, it's still important because sometimes the AI isn't really going to give you what you were expecting. Like, let's see if we can get it to, let's try auto here. Here's a good one too. So, you know, it kind of went overboard as far as almost darkening the image. So I can actually come in here and kind of tweak a little bit as far as say, you know, maybe take the exposure of a hair and not have it be as dark there. I could even, you know, increase the whites a little bit. So while the auto option that Adobe provides to you through its AI can be really, really helpful and kind of that quick, you know, quick and dirty, you know, one and done button, this is why taking a good photograph out of the gate is still really helpful. You don't want to become reliant upon the software. You would rather use the software to make small tweaks to an already well-framed, well-designed photo. And that's the other side too, is you can take a hundred photos and say, I'm going to auto fix all of them using Photoshop and Lightroom's capabilities with AI. If it doesn't have good framing, if it is blurry, if it doesn't have, you know, good color composition, you can't really fix that with these software packages. That's something that you'd have, this is why, again, throughout the semester, you take multiple photographs as far as the overall design goes. So you have a well laid out photo here, but now you can come in and instead what you can do is you can begin to work with as far as the shadows and things like that versus having to worry about is it too blurry, did I frame it correctly, and so on and so forth. So for this week, I really just wanted to show you kind of the differences. Also to yes, uh, you're probably noticing uh, the differences between GIMP, which is free, versus Adobe, which is not. However, yeah, you have access to things like its AI features, its auto features, whereas in GIMP, you're more reliant on yourself and your knowledge of your skills and your trade to actually complete and, you know, be able to edit photos and edit them well.